So without any further ado, I would like to go to the next topic. And I'm, I'm really proud, actually, that the person that brought me here, that invited me, is Bert Boerland. And uh, Bert is going to lead a... Uh, no, it's fine. Me. I think it is fine, Rachel. Uh, he is going yeah, to lead fine, a yeah. Ask Me Anything session. And I hear the people in the chat already coming in. Hello, everyone. Um, it's a great honor for me to have uh, a, such a representation of the global uh, Drupal Association here. And uh, Bert is going to have a great conversation with them. The invite to everybody, please respond in the chat can window. Thank you very much. Yes, Enjoy this session. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. So let's do the first, do you hear me? Do you hear me? All side, do you hear yes. me? Yes. Because <laughs> that's that we can the, hear you. that seems to be the opening uh, the opening session of every Zoom and Hangout meeting nowadays, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I want to make sure that yes, this is a very interesting session that goes to my heart, and I really hope that a lot of people will watch. But do know there's breakout room as well, so uh, please be aware there are four other sessions as well that are pretty damn interesting. Not not that this is not interesting. <laughs> it's just we have, we have uh, like 40 sessions already. <laughs> also, we, we topped 500 people online, which is not that bad, actually. Um, pretty scary also, because two months ago there was nothing, uh, and now we have due to our sponsors, but also mainly due to our attendees uh, and speakers. Uh, a rather nice uh, session, I hope. So, I want to welcome you all. Um, uh, other people, please go to the breakout room if you want. Otherwise, we're going to talk about the uh, Drupal Association, the heart of the uh, Drupal community. Uh, uh, it's been a rough year for all of us, also for the Drupal community, in all honesty. Um, um, both financially and raison de être, why, what the Drupal Association's uh, point really is, uh, should be, uh, yeah, that's also, that's also on, the, on the board. Um, anything is on the table. We had a conference with all of them up front, and I asked the question, what are we not allowed to ask? And the first thing they said, nothing, right? Anything is up, right? Yes. Cool, cool. So, um, online, we have Audra, Jean-Paul, I will skip uh, Jean-Paul, Rachel, um, Betty, and Michelle from the Netherlands. All four are actually from the UK, so that's uh, oh, from, from Europe, sorry, that's interesting as well. Um, this is an open dialogue. Uh, please, please ask your questions in the chat right now. Uh, keep it clean. Um, we're both, we're all here to get better and they're all here to help us out and communicate with us in an open way. Um, so dump your uh, questions in the chat. Um, it will be moderated by Imre, who will paste it towards my iPad so I can talk to you, I hope. Cool. Um, do ask the questions. Uh, if there could be a QR code on screen, because I want to plug my own pub quiz later as well. Uh, we have a pub quiz. If you want to uh, join the pub quiz at 5.30 CET, uh, yes, <laughs> please hook up with three, four uh, other people uh, and go to the URL, which is in the QR code in a moment, um, and say that you want to join, come up with a cool name. Uh, Joomla always seems to be fun somehow, <laughs> and, uh, and have lots of fun as well. Okay, so having said that, the QR code will be there shortly. Um, cool. So, as an icebreaker and to introduce yourself, I want all of you to tell you, Three stories or three lines, sh three sto short lines. Two are true and one is a lie. No, Michelle, not all three are lies because we discussed it. <laughs> uh, one is a lie. And I will start with Rachel. Three short lines about you in the Drupal community or about you yourself. <coughs> and Audra will pick up the lie. Go ahead, Rachel, introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Rachel. I. I, I get a lot of feedback, actually. Um, so I'm Rachel Lawson. I'm the community liaison at the Drupal's Association. And I live in the UK. I was born in Norfolk in the UK. So that's why my Twitter account is Rachel underscore Norfolk. Um, I spent time in the community working group helping out with issues there and helping as the mentoring lead at various events and so on, eventually became community liaison. So 
I'm always happy to listen to people and bring back your feedback into the Drupal Association. I'm gonna. Interesting. Can we, can we, am I getting feedback as well? Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'll try to. Maybe we need to mute the Google Hangout on that side in the studio. Mute my mic, then probably it will be okay. How's that? How's that? Ah, that's better. Okay, can you hear me okay now? Thumbs up, everybody? All right, good. Now I can only hear myself, so hopefully that is working. Um, so Rachel, those all sound like truths to me. I don't sound, I didn't hear any lies. You're, you're from, you live in Norfolk, you're from the UK, you were doing work on the community working group, and now you're the community liaison. Uh, I'm, I'm stumped. Any lies in there? There was one. I am not. I was not born in Norfolk, <gasps> Yorkshire. Right. I did know that. I'm from the <laughs> centre of the universe. <laughs> I did know that. I did know that. Okay. All right. I should have been listening more closely. All right. Well, um, I'll I'll do mine. I'm Audra. Um, I'm the um, chair of the board of the Drupal Association, and I've been on the board for about three years. But I don't think they're not my truths and lies yet. Um, uh, here, here are three. I have been to DrupalCon in six countries. I have been I have uh, been on Drupal.org for over twelve years now. Starting out as a as a product owner a long time ago, um, when I was working for the Economist and we were adopting Drupal, um, and I have contributed to Core. Who wants to guess? Uh, Michelle, are you going to pick on? Are you no. going to take this, or should I take it? No, Michelle. I will take it. Okay, so Audra, mm, I think that you have not. I think that I'm gonna guess. I don't think that you have contributed to core. <laughs> <laughs> was it too easy? I think it was too easy. It was too easy. Okay, but you contributed so many, very many to other things. But uh, I think coding and core is probably documentation could have, could have been a thing. So uh, I'm going to take this off. I'm Batty. I come from Iceland. Live in Germany. I'm also in the board and a treasurer of the Drupal Association, and I'm the founder and the co-owner of um, OneX Internet, which is a, an agency in, in Europe. And my three things are, I have organized more than 10 Drupal camps, and I started to use Drupal in 2007, and I attended DrupalCon Prague. Uh-huh. Well, I think I can pick this one. This one. Um, first, the lie. Um, I haven't seen you in Prague. Uh, I was there. So and I, I've seen many people over there, but, but unfortunately, you were not there yet because uh, we met, well, we met the first time actually in Barcelona. And I don't know if that, that was your first DrupalCon? My second. Your second. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So you're right. All right. Good job. Cool. Um, well, my name is Michel Van Valdi. I am the founder of OneShoe, a digital agency based in Utrecht, in the Netherlands. Um, I'm also a board member of the Drupal Association. Um, this is my, my, my three facts, or uh, potentially one lie. Um, I'm a Drupal, uh, I'm active within the Drupal community since 2005. Um, uh, that was after my companion, uh, Floris Derksen, uh, discovered Drupal. Um, and well, he started working on the technical part, and I decided to work on the community part. Um, my role within the board is to help with uh, uh, marketing and communications to support the, the, the Drupal Association um, and help setting up local associations. Um, and the, the latest local association uh, that was set up was in Colombia, and I'm very proud of uh, being supportive to that one. Oh, well, I well, think I, think I, can, I can, can guess, guess this one then, because I happen to know that Drupal England and Wales has just been formed. So that one must have just sneaked in, <laughs> and I'm really pleased, uh, Greg Harvey, 
and the whole team in Drupal England and Wales have got that up off the ground. Uh, so really pleased about that one. Absolutely, me too. All right. Uh, so we seem so to have lost. Here with Rachel. Ah, Rachel's back. Thank okay. You. Yes, Rachel. Thank you. Um, so, no prop. So, if people have questions, please drop them in the chat because um, we're here to well have an open communication about all what's good and all what's bad or not that good uh, from the Drupal Association called Lovely DA. Um, so, first of all, a question from me: Could you explain what the difference is between the staff and the and the board, because the Drupal is bi Drupal Association is a rather big thing. What, how is it organized? Could you could you help me out there? Uh, I can take that. Sure. You guys want to mute in studio? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Um, so I, and Batty and Michelle, please jump in um, at any point. But um, it, yeah, I think uh, it might be a question from a lot of people. They don't necessarily know what the structure is because I think it has morphed. It's changed a bit over over the years where um, I think the original organization that was born out of uh, uh, DrupalCon in um, DC, I think that that uh, it was kind of a mainly a board run, volunteer run organization. And we've, we've grown and, um, and developed in a way now that we do have a paid staff um, and the, the board now is, is a, more of an advisory body, a, a strategic advisory body. So we, um, we set out the, the strategy um, and, and, then, and also serve as an escalation point, I think, uh, for, for certain things like community working group. Um, but uh, the staff, led by uh, our executive director, Heather Rocker, um, and of which um, Rachel is, is one of our, our staff members, um, they're responsible for delivering on the day-to-day, -day, on, the, on the strategy, um, making sure uh, Drupal.org and the, the associated tools are working, um, and um, the, the work around DrupalCon, as well as a lot of community initiatives as well. So, um, so that's the, um, and, and it's important to note that we are um, kind of independent of the, of the project leadership as well. Um, so obviously uh, the engineering team, which is part of the Drupal Association staff, you know, is, is, is involved in all that, but, but we as the Drupal Association board, we don't direct the product um, uh, at all. So, so I think it's important to kind of see how we're, we're, we're more working on the, the kind of driving Drupal in terms of, of adoption, awareness, helping enable con contribution, things like that. So uh, anything else to add, uh, Batty and Michelle or Rachel? I can, I can maybe add to it. So one example is, for example, the event organizer group where uh, the DA is helping like the event organizers to organize around like how do we how do we avoid that every single event organizer needs to do everything from scratch? And uh, and they like the DA is helping event organizers to like you know obviously have a platform where we can put our events on Drupal.org and where we can like collect data from like how many are coming to the event today and and how many are uh, sponsoring and how many are attending and organizing and volunteering and all the stuff that are related. And also maybe to be able to give credits to that. This is just one of many things, but uh, this is something that is close to my heart. So. Cool, thank you. Anyone else who wants to uh, contribute to that? I, I could say that um, the technical direction of the project is documented in the actual project. So you can go to Drupal or you know, you can go to the Drupal folder into the core folder and you can see maintainers.txt. <coughs> Uh, and you can see the structure of the technical direction of the project all documented in there. Uh, and I think I'm the only Drupal Association staff member listed in there. Um, transparency is always a big issue in, uh, in open source in general and in the Drupal uh, community as well. The whole point of transparency, of course, is that you see something, right? Yeah, that's, otherwise, you can't see transparency by itself. Um, so we have a question in the chat that is, are there topics that the DA is not transparent about? Why? And, and could you please say what it is? That's a bit weird because if you can't be transparent about it, you can't say it. But mm -hmm. could, you give it, could you explain where, what are the limits that you are not transparent about towards the community? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I, can, I, can, I can start I can with start that a little bit. bit. Um, 
I think um, I think it's a really good question, and I think it, it is sometimes really hard to see on the outside if we if we haven't been talking about something. Why is that? <laughs> why aren't we talking about it? Um, and and a lot of it comes down to um, I think really a couple of things. One is that we would try to be as transparent as possible, and and I think that you know one of the one of the things that's become really apparent with this year with the pandemic and and us not being able to meet in person and and having to kind of pivot focus and things like that that um there have been there have been you know a couple of of opportunities to communicate where we haven't been as as reactive as as we wanted to be or proactive as we want to be um so that's something that we really do want to focus on going forward you know kind of making sure that we are communicating as much as, as, as proactively as we can on as many things as we can um, but in answering the question i think there are sometimes things that we can't talk about because they're in process. Um, they or they're in negotiations or they're in development, and um, and it's it just wouldn't be wise for us to talk about just because legally we can't um, maybe talk about a negotiation that's that's happening or um, or maybe a, a situation with a contract or or things like that and that that will be particularly sensitive. Um, so it's oftentimes. Um, it's not that we don't want to share this information. We have to. We just have to be, you know, careful that that um, you know all the all the legal bits um, that that are happening are are covered before we are public about something. Um, the the other part, and I think this kind of harkens back to what I was saying a moment ago about 2020 being a, a pretty challenging year, <laughs> I think, for everybody, is that um, when we have kind of had to focus on finding a solution. So for example, when we were trying to um, pivot around DrupalCon Global, um, for example, it just wasn't a lot of time to really be really, really good at communicating. And I think we would like to, we'd like to be better about that. But, um, you know, to be honest, I think, I think that in, in some cases, it's just been because of time. Um, the, you know, obviously the, the staff is, is paid. It's a very small staff, um, but the board is all volunteers. So, you know, trying to kind of make sure that we're making good use of time and, and prioritizing uh, communication that that's going to be something we're looking at this year. So anything else from anybody else you want to add? Well, one of the things you were talking about negotiations uh, um, uh, and for the viewers, it's interesting to know that, that yeah, we, uh, uh, as a Drupal association, we negotiate uh, venues, for example, um, uh, cities, you know, where the next Supercon is going to be held, et cetera, et cetera. Whilst in those negotiations, you can't talk about it, but we always present the next location always at Drupalcon. So, so that's, a, that's basically just an in-depth example of what Audra is saying. Um, uh, but as a, as a board member, I know we're, we're very, very transparent in, in what we do. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, sometimes we can do things better, you know, but our, our aim is to be as transparent as possible. And what I've also noticed is that there, there's a lot of information that we publish on Drupal.org, uh, but it's lost in the um, enormous amount of content which can be found on Drupal.org, but you can find it, it's there. So, so we are transparent and sometimes it's difficult to find out. So there's something yeah. we need to focus on on the improvement. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. yeah, Michelle has a really good point there with regard to us making sure that people can find things uh, and actually want to find them as well. We actually want to make sure that people think, yeah, I want to know that. Yeah. Uh, say things like our Form 990, which describes all of the financial situations, et cetera, et cetera. Um, all that is there. What we mm -hmm. need to do is get feedback on how we can get that information into the places that people actually want to consume it, shall we say. Rachel. I want to, if, oh, if possible, yes, I, I, I would like to add one. Oh. Sorry, I need to like the muting, but it's okay. I would like to add something to this about what this challenging year. So first, if somebody on your side could maybe mute. Yeah, thank you. So otherwise we hear this double in here. So Audra mentioned it that this year has been extremely hard uh, and, and not just for the DA, but for everyone in that sense, you know, it's just been a very challenging year. And as an example, like I remember being in a meeting in, in March and we were just talking about like, what are we gonna do in the end of 2020? Or it was in the beginning of March. It was straight after my birthday there on the 29th of February. <laughs> 
and and we were just sitting there and we we're having all these ideas and how we how things are getting you know and then then suddenly there is this little thing that is on the news where it's like there's a pandemic coming and and we're like oh how is it gonna be and and this is in march and we are all having in front of us three months later there's the DrupalCon minneapolis happening in 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 may so this was in March. Not, nobody knew what was going to happen. We already sold a lot of tickets for DrupalCon Minneapolis. There was already a lot of like excitement and everybody, you know, and this was happening in May. And, and of course, like turning that around, you know, making sure that like we talked about the venue and all this stuff that, you know, we, we already had organized and all these people who were ready to, to work and make this awesome event happening. Um, that had to be turned around really quickly. And then suddenly, I think it was in April, May, when finally we were able to announce DrupalCon Global and and turn that around and make like a, you know, talk to Hopin and make sure that that can run on that a platform that nobody else like was really much using before and all this stuff. So like, wow, if I, if I think back from the time there, you know, um, that was that was not simple, but that, worked yeah. well and and i think like we are just focusing now on on you know the next yeah. event for example DrupalCon europe happening in four weeks five weeks yeah no, sorry first no no problem no 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 it's all about you um so we could actually say the drupal association is always moving should we say that from now on could you repeat that the, the drupal association is always moving uh yes yes oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, um, from Mark van Gent, um, he's asking the question, what is, in your opinion, the biggest challenge Drupal is facing right now? And what is the DA going to do to solve it, if it's the problem of the DA in the first place? But So, what is the question? Sure, Betty, take it. What's the qu uh, what is the biggest problem? And how can the DA help solve this problem? Betty? I can start. Like, So, personally, about Drupal, you know, I can I can talk about that, but that has nothing to do with the Drupal Association. Like we said, like we are not running the project or, or something like that. Um, what I think that Drupal is facing at the moment is, of course, just that we, you know, we are seeing the adoption growing, and and here in Europe, especially where um, where we are very strong, you know, in countries like Netherlands, Germany, where I'm living now, and just generally in Europe. So. What still we need to do, we need to make it somewhat simpler, or the Drupal project needs to make it simpler for adoption that agencies become stronger in, in adopting the technology by connecting to JavaScript technologies and so on. Um, so, but that's from a Drupal, Drupal perspective, and that has, in that sense, nothing to do with the DA. And there are maybe other challenges that the DA has, right? Otra. Yeah, I, I would um, I would say that you know in terms of that that particular issue that you were just talking about, Betty, you know, like part of what we're we're trying to do with the from the Drupal Association side, you know, from the the board um, strategy as well as the staff delivery is to try to help solve you know provide some framework and tools and support for things that will will help solve some of those issues. Um, but you know, and that's part of why we're really focused on trying to do more to enable contribution in in better ways you know making sure that you know the the tools are 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 working well but also from an adoption standpoint you know making sure that um, there's you know marketing and, and support um, for agencies for you know the 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 people who are really contributing quite a bit to to Drupal you know we want to make sure that they're recognized and supported and so a lot of our focus in terms of the strategy has been on contribution enablement and contribution recognition and, and trying to kind of lift up and, and provide great opportunities um, so that when we, we do have people who are interested in adopting Drupal, that we're connecting them with, um, with the, our biggest you know, contributors to the, to the project. So um, those are the areas that, you know, that are really important to us because we think that they're really important to the future of Drupal, to the success of Drupal. Um, so driving adoption, driving contribution. So those are the, the areas that, that we think are, are, are really important from a competitive standpoint for Drupal, right? So we're looking outward. Um, where does Drupal sit in the, in the universe uh, in terms of uh, people making decisions to adopt Drupal and, and trying to kind of drive the success of that? 
and maybe yeah. and sorry and maybe rachel if you could maybe speak to because i'm just interesting because i where i was always amazed when i started and joined the the board is like the the power of the engineering team and what they are doing mm. and for example the the things what they're doing now in gitlab and you know maybe you can tell us a little bit about it because i i'm always amazed how how great things they are doing there it's funny actually because i was trying to kind of get in there to say that um, the engineering team, uh, some of the core maintainers, the key core maintainers, uh, and I actually, I, I jumped in to listen in, spent yesterday evening in a very, very long discuss discussion on how we can dramatically improve how we support contribution in terms of JavaScript uh, to make life easier and more welcoming to JavaScript contributors uh, to Drupal. Um, so that is actually conversations and actions that are taking place right now. As you know, you know, the Drupal Association have already been building things that help all contributors moving over from the old patch uh, regime over to GitLab and now merge requests are coming in for everybody. Thursday, I think. I think for every project, it's Thursday. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's Thursday. Um, so that stuff is happening and it really makes a difference. It really helps move the project forwards, creates an environment where people from outside the project are going to find it easier to contribute to Drupal. And we need that. We can't just have people who have been here for 13, 14, 15 years. We need new people as well and new people come in with different expectations of how to contribute to a project and we need to provide that uh, which is something the drupal association has really been working on and and maybe rachel because i i am also following the chat here and, and i and i'm sorry if i wasn't clear enough in the in the in my answer there for so mark to just understand uh, the question that came from from uh from him about like so I think, of course, the DEA, in the case of what, what Rachel is talking about, is extremely important that we that the contribution part is enabled. And there, of mm. course, the, the engineering team helps to enable that. So so you're 100% right. Like that, that is important for the future of the Drupal project. Um, and just want to make that really clear that, you know, that is important for us. And that is one of the main things that I think the Drupal Association board is like, how, how can we make sure that we can enable this? That this just works. Um. Yeah, yeah. So I would I would say you know we've got several initiatives that that um, we're working on in terms under you know kind of our our strategy overall, um, but they're very much focused on contribution enablement and adoption, right? And then and and but also helping you know people kind of keep and develop their their skills, right? You know because because we want as Rachel said a a really um, you know kind of diverse and and um you know kind of excited community of country of contributors so we're we're trying to do things like the the scholarship program expanding the scholarship program for example um you know to enable more people to to contribute and and participate in various ways so there's there's lots of things that we're doing but they're they all kind of roll up to those two main things right driving contribution you know supporting contribution enablement and and driving adoption um so those are the, the big ones yeah. As the uh, OK boomer in the room, the oh, sorry, year... first I think you're muted, so we don't hear ah, you if okay. you're asking us something. Mm, <laughs> maybe you can hear me now. Repeat, please. Yes, yes, yes. Test, test, test. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? We can't hear. You're still muted. Yeah. Uh, it's not me. It's, it's them. And be done on the Google Meet. Now you can hear yes. me. Um, as the OK boomer in the room, uh, the one with 20 years experience, I do think that it's very important to have new blood coming in. So I fully agree on that. Um, 20 years ago, when I, 90 years ago, when I joined Drupal, I, um, I saw there were 24 uh, time zones in the world. Makes compl complete sense, right? 24 time zones. Little did I knew that there are maybe even something like 30 or 40 time zones because internationalization and localization is the core of what Drupal is. If it's the core of what Drupal is, it is not always what the Drupal Association, the heart of the community, is saying towards the community itself, right? We have, we have words like 
uh, a town hall, which means nothing outside of the North American context. We have mails from a Drupal association without a plus one, so nobody can call them outside of the USA. We have, um, uh, there used to be the security advisor, it used to be in, in, an, in, an, in a time zone which was in America. There's lots of Americanization in the Drupal association, I think, while India is the second country in the world contributing towards Drupal core. How can mm -hmm. we make sure, and I'm asking for Americans, I understand that. I'm sorry, I'm asking for European, <laughs> for European uh, uh, um, members of the Drupal Association. But how can we make sure that a Drupal Association really represents the world and not Europe and or America, or America and or Europe? Because this is, this is really, a I think, in Europe a point, and it's partly due to geopolitics and other stuff, but the polarization is not good for the Drupal Association and the community in its whole. So, who wants to pick this hot potato up? I'm, I'm happy to comment on that. <laughs> Was it you, Rachel? Great. Yeah, yes. so I think... Oh, sorry, can you meet on the studio side? Yes, I will. <laughs> this is a little ping pong back and forth. Uh, yeah, so... Oh, still on... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So uh, it is. <laughs> it's it is it's a it's a challenge. I think you know for sure. The there's a question of um, you know things getting feeling too Americanized and how do we avoid that? How do we make sure there's good representation? And I think that's not something that's not like a one one sentence answer. But I can tell you that it is something that is that we you know kind of we think about both on the within the the board and within the staff. Of how can we how can we make sure that there's good representation? So, from a, a board standpoint, um, we do through our nominating process um, look to have good representation, good spread um, uh, as much as we can from a, a geography standpoint. So we're getting good um, good representation within the the board. Um, obviously, from a staffing perspective, a, a lot of our staff members are physically. Um, in the U.S., but but um, in the organization, the the staff organization has been remote for for quite a long time. So it's um, it's not it's not meant to be a U.S. based. Um, so, um, but I think you know to to the question really specifically, you know we I think that sometimes those things do slip in because of maybe the the people who are working on a particular thing at the moment. You know, using the the term town hall for example, um, which to an American sounds like a perfectly <laughs> normal acceptable thing but might sound really foreign and doesn't quite make sense for a lot of a lot of other people um so i think in in those instances um when those things pop up we just need to hear about it so we can we can make the change you know like we we want to be inclusive we want it to be representative um we're not always going to get it right but um, we just need to we just need to know when those things happen um so that we can we can address them and i want to add to it but so for me, as an Icelandic person, and uh, having the name, the word governance, I was actually like really trying to like look that up, and also in German, and I looked up this word governance, and and I was like, oh, they, everybody was talking about governance, and we, you know, that we there were some discussions two years ago in that Drupal community, and I was always wondering what this word means, and then I went and started to Google it, and then started to translate it, and then actually I got like words that are actually like that w I would never relate to in any way. And uh, so that is extremely important to make the simplicity of the language as easy, like as simple as possible. So I, I can understand what does it mean, governance, or what does a town hall mean, or what does these things, you know, like we use completely different ways of how to describe things. And therefore, when we sometimes do, when we translate these words, we can't even like put one and one together. And I, and I think like we are always doing better and we are, you know, doing like when we see it and, and we have this in, a, in the Drupal community here in Germany as well. It's always like we try to find a simple language. It's called actually in, in German, it's called the leichte Sprache, which is like a simple language. And yeah. we try to like in Germany too, like make this then uh, see if we can make, make it in a way that, that everyone understands and not those who are just extremely good in speaking English. Yeah, yeah so I mean, we have European staff, so we have me in the UK uh, at the Drupal Association. We have Tanisha in Delhi, in India. Um, so we are not shy at 
alerting other members of staff to materials uh, and saying, what does that mean? It doesn't mean anything outside of the US, etc. cetera. Um, avoiding using uh, references to cultural references to things in the US. So we're constantly bringing those to attention of other staff all the time. Yeah. Uh, obviously things are going to slip through, but yeah, we actually actively try to make sure that our language is world relevant because we're a world relevant association. Absolutely. Um, in fact, actually you can see that our board is, is truly world relevant. It's not specifically biased in any way already. Um, the appointments are great. Um, as far as the, you know, sort of choosing people for election, we reach out to people and say, hey, you know, have you thought about standing for the board? And we actually make an effort to do that. So, for example, you know, sort of 30% of uh, people who stood this year were from Africa, which I was incredibly, incredibly proud of. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we try really hard. And, and, if we, and if we make mistakes, you know, if people make oh, mistakes, yeah. I would say, like, send them a direct message. You know, uh, the staff, um, the board, we're not, you know, 24-7 on Twitter in every channel, for example. Um, but send them a direct message and we pick it up. You know, we like to learn and, and, and we like feedback because, you know, it's what I always say to my colleagues, you know, give me feedback and I'll fly. So, so yeah, feedback is good. Uh, but send me a direct message. Send send the staff a direct message, so they can uh, they can look into it. Yeah, I feel like I'm on CNN and I can use the magic magic screen thingy. Um, it's not working actually. Um, so recently there was some fuss about um, uh, changing the uh, election process. It used to be you have you have an account on d.o as Drupal.org used to say, which was active for a year. It changed a bit towards, in the gaming community, is called pay to win, which means um, you make an account with the Drupal association, either paid or not paid, and then you can choose who gets in the Drupal association. Retrospective, would you have done that the same or communicated in any other way because there was a, it didn't go well with the community? Yeah, um, I can start that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, I think um, I think there. I think we could have communicated and we could have really started having the conversation about this in a much better way, um, so that that um, we could you know maybe bring people along the way with us <clears throat> in our thinking. Um, and, and I think when we look back at that process, you know, that's, that is the kind of the thing that's really clear, I think, to, uh, to a lot of us on the board, um, that, that we could have done a better job of, of having an open conversation about why we were doing it, you know, the, the, the process that we're taking, you know, ultimately we, we have a lot of exciting things that we're working on at the Drupal Association. A lot of things that we think are really, really important for the, the future of Drupal. And what we'd like to, to do is have a really engaged, active membership, right? We want, we want people to join us in that work at the Drupal Association. Um, but we don't necessarily assume that everybody who contributes in the community wants to, to do that, that they want to be a part of that, uh, you know, that, that may not may be a priority. So we want, people to opt in to that, right? We want people to say, that's important to me and I wanna contribute to that and I wanna be a part of the association. So, so that was our thinking was that, you know, okay, well let's, let's make sure that um, we're not just assuming everybody in the community is, is in, interested in doing this work and being, being members and being a part of it. Let's have people opt in. And, and say that they they want to be a part of it and they want to be engaged with, with us because we think that that's gonna, that's gonna help us kind of work together and collaborate better um, to achieve a lot of the things that we wanna, we wanna do. So that was the, the thinking behind it. Um, and, and unfortunately, I think the way that we did it with, without having that conversation up front made it feel like we, we just wanted to exclude people or put up a barrier in front of people. 
um, and and that wasn't really the case. But but um, but I can I can really understand why people felt that way. <laughs> um, you know, kind of especially you know having been so um, engaged in a lot of other ways or or having been used to to voting that way in the past. So um, you know, with with being able to opt in as well, we thought it it was also an opportunity for people who who may maybe haven't been involved in contributing for a year, maybe it was less time, but they were also really excited uh, to be engaged and, and to, to participate in, with the Drupal Association. So, um, you know, so we, we thought we were improving it in that way. Um, but we did think about, you know, the fact that there's a membership fee. We, you know, we, we consider it to be pretty modest, um, but we know that it's not, you know, it's not, it's not nothing to, to everybody. And so we we did kind of think about that and say, okay, well, let's make sure that this isn't a barrier. So you know, if if somebody can't afford it, um, the fifteen dollars uh, U.S. dollars a year, you know, then let's make sure that they can they can get a free membership, right? We didn't want cost to be a, a barrier, right? We we just wanted that opportunity for people to opt in um, and to say they wanted to be a part of it. Um, so we did, you know, we offer the the opportunity for people to request privately. Um, a, a free membership. So, um, so I think you know. I think that there, you know, we that's what you know. Talking about what we wanted to do from a co communication standpoint and make sure that communications are getting in front of people at the right time in the right way. You know, the way they can they can receive them. I think that's something that's really important to us. But um, but hopefully that gives some clarity around how we ended up where we where we are. Is Betty Michelle? Is there any? I want to I want to ask you because you know obviously this is a discussion we had. Um, yeah. on the board as a, a board decision. I think this is 100% uh, correct, Audra, and I think you said it correct. I think like one of the questions that Bert has, uh, maybe Bert, you can give me a sign up or down, if you were, if the question was also about like the changing of the voting system, correct? Yes, so maybe, so maybe, no. Yeah, well, maybe because Rachel, maybe you can tell us a little bit about like the, that change because that was also a change to how we how we did the voting. Yeah. Yeah. So late last year, I looked into voting systems because every year for the last, well, certainly the last three years that I've been Drupal Association community liaison because that's what I've got data for, uh, and presumably for a couple of years before that. Um, what we were getting every single year was feedback about the fact that people couldn't work out how to vote. Um, so what we were seeing was people were saying the interface, how you actually chose you people was a problem. And in fact, last year in 2019, uh, 50 people managed to vote for nobody. Um, now, it's quite possible that somebody intentionally wanted to vote for nobody, but uh, it seemed like quite a lot of work to do that, for, to say, no, I don't like anyone. So we kind of felt that there probably was a situation that lots of people, 50 people uh, last year said, hey, blah, 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 filled in the form, but they'd filled it in incorrectly. They'd probably ordered people, but then not moved the bar up to say, hey, yes, I actually want to choose these people. So we wanted a different. We wanted a different system. Um, we wanted to use a system that other open source organisations are using, so that we're using best practice of other people. Uh, we wanted to use something that had a better way of getting the vote in front of people. So we looked around. And we spoke to people at the OSI, um, so opensource.org. We spoke to the Python Software Federation. We spoke to a couple of others as well. But both of the PSF and the OSI were using a thing called Helios voting. And the, it uses a, a slightly different uh, method called approval voting rather than instant runoff voting, which means you simply say, these people I find acceptable. There's no ordering. Um, so it's slightly different, but uh, the additions and stuff was good. Um, we did some research into that in the background, generally about approval voting and what we read, and I can post some links uh, later on in the 
discussion um, around approval voting actually being just as good in terms of the results it gives us as IRV. Um, so we thought, yes, we wanted to do that. The other advantage it gave us is it put the vote, the actual voting slip in your email inbox. The net effect of that was we went from 1.9% of the people who could vote in 2019 actually voting, resulting in 900 and some valid votes, to 27.8% of those that could vote in 2020, giving us 920 valid votes in this year. So far more of those people who were in, who were asked to vote did vote, which means that we, you know it, it means that the vote is slightly more valid in that respect. Um, and we also know that they're voting using a system that's easier to use. So yeah, I mean, in terms of the voting methodology, I think we got it right. Thank you. Is that you, Betty, who did that? <laughs> Betty, did you uh, do it? Yeah, thank you so much. So, um, I'm Dutch. I'm, we're blunt, so apologies up front. Um, Me too. <laughs> the DA is semi-self-acclaimed the heart of the Drupal Association and had a near heart attack. What would have happened if the Drupal Association actually had a heart attack what would have not worked the next day? Would drop Drupal.org be offline? Would lawsuits not be answered anymore? What actually is your most, the most precious thing you do that would not be there anymore once the DA is gone? Bert, you say once as if you've got a plan there. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> is this part of your, your, your Dutch bluntness? <laughs> no, I'm I don't. Kidding. No. <laughs> No, sorry for that. <laughs> that, That's okay. that was not worded I'm, rightly, but the question still remains. Yeah. So I can. So as a, as a treasurer and knowing like everything about the finances and all this stuff. Um, so the good thing, the good news is, is that the Drupal Association is not near to have a what you say a heart attack. <laughs> Uh, and that is, of course, like, but but let's talk about what happened earlier in the year. And we like all know about the Drupal Cares uh, campaign or, you know, that we did. And that was exactly to avoid the fact that nobody knew what was going to happen. And we just had to make sure that Drupal.org is there up and running. And I think like we, what 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 happened then in the end is, is of course, we managed to, to, go well from that in a way of that, you know, that we now we're, are in a good position of like going through the pandemic in a way that we don't know what is going to happen in the next six months. So so the Drupal Cares made us um, being able to like see like what, what if like, you know, are all events going to be like this here now, what we are having are, you know, how is it going to be and, and how is traveling going to be and then all this stuff. So, so I think that the, what our job is, of course, then, in that case is to make sure that the top priority is that Drupal.org is there. And I think like um, that is very you know, important for us and, and something like Drupal Cares pro project or campaign that where we were just making sure that, 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 that there wouldn't be any shortage there. So I wanna also point out, I'm gonna put the link into the, the chat here is that we have all the financials up on Drupal.org under the Drupal Association, and you will actually see there how you know how large the organization is and how the how the revenue and the cost is di divided. And uh, for us, like DrupalCon has always been uh, playing a big role of, of funding the Drupal.org engineering part, and and that is of course like one of the first things that we noticed in the beginning of the year, which then led to also this Drupal Cares campaign, seeing like, hey now. We are not seeing DrupalCon Minneapolis happening in May, and we don't know what is going to happen in the next year, how long this is going to take. Like, let's make sure that Drupal.org is there. So if that answers your question. Um, 
about that being the main priority from if if in the case if everything goes wrong <laughs> yeah i think the the other thing that i'll just add to what what batty said is that and and this kind of harkens back to something i mentioned earlier about you know the fact that we've moved into um a place where we've got a staff of people who are who are really kind of focused on on um you know kind of the the forward motion of the Drupal Association. Um, and we've got a, a great team in place. I mean, the, it's 16 staff under other under our executive director, Heather Rocker. Um, but the, the team is is phenomenal. And but you know, I say that partly because um, they've got, you know, we've got a really great stewardship of our financials, you know, which as Body pointed out, you know, you can you can look at online um, and really, you know, kind of really good process, best practices around um, putting an, uh, you know, operating budget contingency in plan in place, you know, to make sure that that we've got really good continuity, really good stewardship of the of the funds that we have to make sure that it's really focused on the most important work, you know, obviously Drupal.org being the most important thing that we um, that we do to, uh, for the for the success of the project. So um, yeah, that's it, it's a really good question. And I think, you know, if you've got any if anybody has any follow-up questions about that type of thing, please let us know because you know we we do we'd be happy to kind of give you what we can around that information. Yes, thank you. So um, it used to be so, so that Drupal Association was founded to be the wallet of the Drupal conferences. What happened? since we don't have a Drupal conference anymore by the DA in Europe? Ooh, that's a really good question. <laughs> Can I take a, a first stab at it? Sure. Yeah. yeah, so I, I think, you know, you're right. I mean, it started um, out of the fact that the Drupal conferences were happening and there was money that had come in and we, we needed to make sure that, you know, it was being taken care of and put, you know, used to in the right ways. Um, but obviously, you can you can kind of see and you know, all this, the the things that we talk about around Drupal.org and all the, the kind of contribution enablement and tools that the engineering team provides. You know that that they you know kind of manage. I think um, I think that's really one of the really key important reasons why um, why we have the Drupal Association is um, to to keep and maintain Drupal.org. Um, but we also are focused on um, you know things like enabling contribution, which is not just about having the tools on Drupal.org, but also the frameworks in place that support local associations, um, that provide opportunities for people to come together. Obviously, with a small staff of 16 and a volunteer board, we can't necessarily um, you know, enable every single thing in the world, which is why we want to provide tools, frameworks, opportunities for collaboration, um, you know, documentation that, that helps event organizers so they don't have to reinvent the wheel all the you know every single time you know all these all these things that that help enable the work around the world by different groups of people so I, I think you know the the central function that we're trying to serve is to drive contribution um, and and to and to support um, the, the project overall um, so I think we have moved beyond just delivering a, a conference every year Right, a, a big, a big Drupal conference um, to to other things that are important for the the lifeblood of of Drupal, so to speak. Mm -hmm. and, and and adding to that, you know, I, I got an, just an epiphany. It's the same as what happened with the Dutch Local Association. Um, I was I was there when the Dutch Local Association was founded, um, and it was there as a basically to 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 safeguard the money that the income from coming from from Drupal Jam, um, and the Drupal Jam, the, the local association has you know grown uh, grown in its tasks, uh, uh, has become more and more mature, and now is responsible for marketing. Uh, there have been training camps. Um, uh, there's a, a business leader track. So 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 yeah, over years it, it has become much more mature, and that same counts for the, the Drupal Association, the Global Association. Yeah, and and just hey, I, I have to actually say this because I realized this that we probably use the Dutch Drupal Association as an example in a lot of things when we talk about like local association. How do you enable like the local? Because 
you know, I know it from here, you know, we in Germany, I, I'm even Icelandic, but like, we don't like speaking English. You know, we, we, we do it in, in user groups and we go on Drupal camps and we do it exactly how you're doing it. So we can actually include more people to come, but we want to have stuff in our own language. So therefore, like the Drupal Association can't do this all for all markets of the world. They're way too small entity to be able to do that. But what the, the work is to actually like make sure to enable that. So there are all these round tables that uh, have been happening now since I think three years, I think since Nashville. So at Drupal cons, where we come together, there are actually where the local associations come together, the event organizers come together. And this is all being like, so Rachel is the one who is moderating this and, and helping us to come together and bringing us together. And all the time, like, you know, Drupal, Drupal uh, Netherlands come into the mind and it's just like, hey, look at how they are doing. And Imre has, was last time with us, I think, in the round table and telling us about all the great things that you are doing. One of this stuff, having a, one of the largest camps or Drupal events happening in, in Europe is today. And, yeah. and this is just a, a major work and all the stuff that you're doing with the press. Uh, and I think like, just want to let you know, like all the great work that is being ha happening in Netherlands. I think like everybody's watching and including us in Germany, we are watching in, in Iceland and, and also the Drupal Association are seeing like, how can we replicate this? And how can we make this happen in other countries? And 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 thank you to like Michelle and and Bert and Imre and all of you who are helping us to get this knowledge. Yeah, das ist sehr nett von Ihnen zu sagen. Und ich, ich danke Ihnen sehr für das für die Wörter, die schönen Wörter, die Sie gesagt haben über die niederländische Drupal Association. Was that good enough? <laughs> Could you hear that? <laughs> Could only hear a little bit, but it sounded Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. No, but no, never mind. Hey, I it really was have German, to. Right? Oh, German, right? It was kind ah. of. It, I tried my best of German, but mm, not good, good enough, I'm Very afraid. Um, can so, I, sorry, sorry, Bert. Can I just add one more thing to that? One um, more thing, because we need to close down as well because okay, the schedule okay. is tight. But if it's short, please do. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just wanted to add, like, I think the the other thing that's really become more apparent in the last couple of years is that, um, you know. When, when organizations are looking to adopt Drupal, they want to know who is doing great Drupal, right? Who can they, what talent, where can they find talent? You know, where, how, you know, can, if they adopt Drupal, will they have the right talent to support them? And I think that's become a really important key thing of what the Drupal Association is, is trying to do is support, you know, kind of lift up those um, supporting partners, improve what we offer from a, a a certified partner program that we're working on. So I think, you know, that, that is a, something that's that's really key that I think is, is a focus both on the contribution and the adoption of, of Drupal that, that's key. So anyway, thank you for letting me add that. Um, I know that we're short on time. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for, for taking this, this down, but we had a, a good hour of discussion. I think that some of the major questions were answered, and I uh, thank you Ihnen for that. That was better, right? <laughs> yes, thank you very. Um, if the the staff and others will be at the Drupal Association booth, which is in the, uh, the the venue, so please, if you have any questions that you can't do in the chat or won't do in the chat, or you still have some answers on the questions, please do go to the booth because they'll be asking. You, you can ask them and they'll be uh, providing the answers, right? Um, I really want to thank you for being here, for being open and transparent. Uh, and I do think that the DA Ask Me Anything will go to all the Drupal camps all around the world because we have lots of work to do together as local associations, organizers, and as the DA as well. So um, please give a warm hand for the DA and uh, do check out the booth. Thank you. <laughs> Love you all. Cheers. <laughs>